is up you guys welcome back to yet another one today we are in the new 2020 the all new mazda cx30 courtesy of jack gm volvo mazda in york pa and so of course with this being a brand new model for the 2020 model year had to take a look and by the way in case you were wondering they did not call it the cx4 because this essentially does slot in between the mazda cx3 and cx5 but they didn't call it the cx4 because they already have a cx4 in china and they didn't want it to get confusing with two cx4s that are you know slightly different in design and actually a different vehicle so they called it the cx30 which is yeah, it's still a little bit confusing, but still, nonetheless, it is its own vehicle. I wanted to make note of that. And Mazda promises this one is going to have stunning looks and it will be fun to drive, but yet all Mazdas pretty much do fit that criteria. And so having recently reviewed the 2020 Hyundai Kona, that one is going to be fresh in my mind, so there may be some comparisons there. But what do you say? Let's just go ahead and jump right into it. And as always, let's start with pricing. And so as expected, there are several different trim levels for the 2020 Mazda CX-30. First one being the base setup, starting at $21,900. Then you have Select, starting at $23,900. Preferred, starting at $26,200. And lastly, the one we have today, starting at $28,200, labeled the Premium. And so, by the way, that was front-wheel drive configurations. If you wanted to add all-wheel drive, simply add $1,400 to any of those prices. And so, but regardless of trim level that you go with power plant on this little beast is going to be the same powering this one is going to be a 2.5 liter direct injected inline four cylinder putting out 186 horsepower at 6,000 rpm 186 pound feet of torque available at 4,000 rpm power sent to front wheels or all wheels through a six speed automatic with paddle shifters if you go with the premium trim that we have today so you guys know we will be testing those out in a little bit here but nonetheless red line comes in at 6500 rpm if you really wanted to push this one to its limits zero to 60 times 7.8 seconds that is a motor trend number and for comparison's sake the 2020 hyundai kona comes in at 6.6 .6 seconds since it's fresh in my mind but nonetheless mpg numbers come in at 25 in the city 33 highway for the front wheel drive 24 city 31 highway for the all-wheel drive kona comes in at 26 city 29 highway it's a little bit less for the kona but a little more power i guess that's the trade-off but either way this one is going to take regular unleaded fuel aka 87 octane and so while we are sitting here at a red light i did want to mention there is a sport mode located just beside the shifter here to the left of the shifter if you press that up that will adjust things like the shift points and the throttle response so i do believe after we get a green light here we're going to have to go ahead and test out the paddle shifters in sport mode and see how quickly they react for us. And by the way, to put it in full manual shift mode, what you're gonna wanna do is slide the shifter all the way to the back and to the left, and then it will display what gear you're in just above that sport mode designation. And so, your second gear. A little bit of a delay there, kind of expected though, honestly. Most SUVs don't have quick reacting paddle shifters, to be honest. So it is kind of cool that they're there, especially living in Pennsylvania here, because when it snows out and you're going down a steep hill, a lot of times engine braking is the safer route, so you don't, don't hit your brakes and go sliding down the hill because of it. So engine braking is a good thing. And having paddle shifters certainly will assist with that. So that's definitely a plus. But to take it out of that manual shifting mode, just slide the shifter all the way to the right and it sport mode is just going to take off on me so it does definitely hold the rpms at a much higher level giving you more power on demand there you can tell the shift points are most definitely adjusted in that sport mode which i of course love you gotta love it especially if you're merging onto the highway but now that we've gotten the paddle shifters out of the way let's go ahead and do a quick little acceleration with the cx30 having complete control and let's see how quickly we can get this one here up to speed all right you guys are you ready and let's go. Wow. <laughs> yeah, it's not bad. Honestly, it's not bad. For the size of it, uh, it's it's really not bad. I guess is the best way to describe it. It's not gonna be as fast as the Kona. Certainly more than the mine at a bit more power. But that's just me personally, but really acceleration on this, you're not gonna have any issues with merging onto the highway or anything like that. So it'll do the trick for the actual size the CX-30 is. So definitely no issues there. But as always, to go along with that acceleration, braking is equally important. So let's hit the brakes. 
yeah, that'll work. <laughs> so really no issues with brake pedal delay. I don't think I've ever had an issue there with Mazda. So their brake pedal is always right on point. No sponginess or delay or anything like that. So it's always a good thing. But by the way, the specs on that braking configuration is 11.6 inch ventilated front discs, 10.4 inch solid rear discs, in case you were curious. Touching on suspension and handling a little bit, up front you're gonna get an independent McPherson strut front suspension. In the back, a Torsen beam rear axle. As far as the steering feel goes, it is amazingly sensitive, which is a brilliant thing, especially for the size of this. That is one thing this thing definitely has on the Kona and really any Mazda has over every other brand and its segment really is. The steering feel is amazing. A lot of times when you get into SUVs, especially there's dead spots in the steering where it really doesn't do anything until you turn a little bit more, but it's like every single inch you turn this thing, you get an immediate reaction. It instantly points you in the direction that you want to go. And Mazda's always done that brilliantly and there's no exception with the CX-30. It's, it's, it's a beautiful thing, basically. <laughs> Ride quality has been perfectly fine for me so far today in my short test drive in the CX-30, so that's certainly on point as well. Touching on cabin noise, you guys can probably not hear a whole lot coming into the cabin because that is very nice as well. But so then touching on visibility, I honestly can see pretty decent out the back. It is a little narrower of a view than you would get maybe in a CX-5, but of course it is a smaller SUV, so that is to be expected. But really, you're not gonna have any issues, especially because it is a smaller SUV. You shouldn't have any issues of visibility there. Did want to mention to go along with that, rain sensing windshield wipers do come standard and you do get a head up display that I am currently looking at right now, displaying my speed onto my windshield. It better helps me keep my eyes on the road so I can enjoy the drive a little better, but that is gonna be standard for the premium trim level only that we have today. So it's definitely a plus, but that about rounds out the performance segment of this review. Let's now go ahead and take a look at the exterior of this all new 2020 Mazda CX-30. Alrighty, here she is, you guys, the new 2020 Mazda CX-30. In case you were curious about the exterior color, it is finished in machine gray metallic. Definitely looks quite nice, but let's go ahead and start up front here. LED headlights will come standard across the board. They will, of course, come with the automatic feature, meaning when it starts to get dark out, they will turn on automatically for you, so you never have to worry about that. LED daytime running lights also coming standard up front. And there is a chrome perimeter, of course, around that front grille, as Mazda always does with their vehicles. Kind of extends to the bottom portion of the headlight as well. Definitely looks good up there. And so we're now making our way to the side. Taking a look up top first, you will find roof rails for the premium trim level only, actually, when it comes to the CX-30. Chrome belt line molding will come standard across the board. You will find rear privacy glass for the select trim level and up. So not on the Sport. That's kind of interesting. But nonetheless, body colored power adjustable side mirrors will come standard you will get integrated turn signals if you go with the select trim level and up taking a look down at the wheel setup 16 inch aluminum alloy wheels will come with the base setup 18 inch aluminum alloy wheels for all other trim levels actually but now let's go ahead and make our way to the back small little shark fin head up top there one of the smaller ones i've seen lately rear spoiler with an integrated brake light coming standard rear window wiper also standard led tail lights coming standard on all trim levels but that signature trim let me show you guys is going to give you that led signature combination tail light so kind of like a 3d design effect definitely looks good back there and of course just below it all dual exhaust outlets with chrome tips across the board so i do think you guys know what we have to do next as always here is that exhaust clip <laughs> So, but now since we are around back, when it comes to opening that rear lift gate, you will actually get a power lift gate if you go with the premium trim level that we have today, meaning all I need to do is simply just press the button on the key fob. It's going to open up for me. I can also press that button on the key fob again, and it's going to shut for me. So power lift gate only with the premium. Every other trim level, you're just going to get the manual lift gate, which is kind of fine for this segment. But once opened up, cargo capacity is going to come in at 20.2 cubic feet behind that second row there. And of course, there is a 60-40 split, meaning the rear seats do fold down for quite a bit of extra space there if you needed it. And you can also find in that cargo area some led cargo lighting a lot of times they'll just put regular bulbs back there but led cargo lighting is pretty cool you're also going to have some tie down anchors and in lieu of some in-floor storage you will actually find a spare tire 
which is a good thing in my opinion. I always prefer the spare tire over the fix of flat kits these days. But anyways, let's make our way to the rear legroom that is going to come in at 36.3 inches. So for reference, I am even six feet tall. This is actually quite good for the second row legroom for this segment because the cone actually comes in at 34.6. So it's got a little more legroom in the CX-30, which is a good thing. Rear center armrest with cup holders is going to come with the select trim level and up. You will also find rear ventilation, once again, for this select trim level and up. Then make our way to the front seats. Cloth seating is gonna come with the base setup. Leatherette seating is gonna come with the select and preferred trim levels. And you will get a full leather setup if you go with the premium that we have today. And by the way, the preferred trim level is going to add to that an eight-way power adjustable driver's seat, two position memory settings, and heated front seats as well. Then make our way to the steering wheel. It is tilt and telescoping. It is leather wrapped for the select trim level and up. And when it comes to the startup, let me first start by showing you guys the key here. You do have your Mazda logo on the one side and all of the buttons are actually located on the side of the key. And of course, this is a keyless entry setup. So really, you don't ever have to actually take this key out of your pocket if you didn't want to. So that's always a good thing. But once inside, there is a push button start across the board for all trim levels. So all I am going to do is simply just put my foot on the brake and press that engine start button located just by the driver's right knee there. And so, but then once started up, tachometer is all the way to your left. Speedometer is front and center and in digital form. I found that pretty cool. It makes a nice little chiming sound as you turn the vehicle on for the first time too. I found that pretty cool as well. Of course, you have things like your outside temperature. Of course, you have your fuel information, how many miles you have left until you hit empty. Really the basics up there, so it's always nice. Taking a look at overall interior quality, you will get a power moonroof if you go with the premium trim level only. So, of course, that's what you're looking at right now. Dual zone climate control with the select trim level and up, meaning both driver and passenger can set their own settings there. Excellent interior quality, and the reason being, I really love the interior quality here. Um, wait, hang on, before we get to that, overhead sunglass holder, it's pretty standard. Frameless, kind of frameless rear view mirror, that's pretty cool too. But again, the best part about this, no other manufacturer does this unless you go up to like luxury, like Lexus or something like that. But there are three different interior colors in here. A lot of times you'll get all black, or you'll get a two-tone combination of like a light leather and a dark leather. So we have the light leather. This one does come standard with a light leather setup. You also have black leather um, just below the infotainment screen, just above the passenger side glove box, and then just surrounding the infotainment screen as well as the center armrest and around the shifter here, you have a very dark saddle brown leather as well. Three different colors in the interior. That is absolutely brilliant. I wish more manufacturers would do things like this. I get so tired of the basic black setups like I have my own Mustang, but <laughs> nonetheless, I absolutely love the interior for that reason alone. I also like the design. The saddle brown leather starts on the doors. It continues just above the dash and it has a nice light stitched leather to it as well. So overall, Mazda did a very good job with the design, a very good job with the interior quality. I'll also like just above the passenger side glove box, there's two vents on that side, but then it kind of makes it look like it's all one large vent, kind of like an Audi-esque type of setup. So you guys know if you ever checked out the interiors of Audis, they often do that, but it looks absolutely amazing. Of course, within the glove box, you have two different trays, I guess, so to speak. You have your normal glove box area, but then you have a owner's manual manual tray also just above that so that's always nice just in front of the shifter you can find a usb charging port there's a little tray area there's dual cup holders in front of the shifter i always love that and although it might be a little more of a reach to get your cups or whatever i do like that it's in front of it because that means you can actually rest your arm on the center armrest without it banging around the cups if you're holding the shifter, if you're shifting into reverse or drive, the cups often get in your way when they're behind the shifter, but not in the CX-30 because they put it in front of it. So that's a good design move in my opinion. Another cool thing I like about this center armrest is you can slide it forward and back. So even more comfort if you're going on long road trips or whatever. And of course, once opened up, you have yet again another USB charging port. You have a 12 volt charging outlet. And of course, a nice little storage area, pretty much as expected. But again, the thing that really wins it over for me on this interior is the fact that there are three interior colors. You got the light, the dark, and the brown. So that's wonderful. But now let's go ahead and make our way to the tech display here on the CX-30. You will find an 
8.8 inch infotainment display across the board. This is wonderful. Even the base CX-30 has this massive screen up front here. This is awesome. Bluetooth and audio streaming come standard. Android Auto and Apple CarPlay. Here's the kicker. For the select trim level and up, the base trim doesn't get Android Auto and Apple CarPlay, which kind of sucks, but it's whatever. And by the way, to control what is on this infotainment screen, it is not touchscreen, by the way. It is all controlled by the circular dial and buttons directly behind the shifter. And it is a very easy setup to use. And honestly, I wouldn't want this particular setup to be touchscreen because it is such a long reach. It really is better off if you just use the circular dial and all that, especially if you're driving. It's going to be so much more safe and convenient for you. So that's always a good thing. But it's very easy to use. You can, of course, check out your radio settings up there as well. And by the way, when it comes to the sound system, if you go with the bass or select trims, you will get eight speakers. If you go with the preferred or premium trims, like the one we have today, you will get a 12 speaker Bose sound system. So I think you guys know what we have to do next. Let's turn on the radio, see what we got playing this morning, and let's test out the clarity of this one. Gotta love the 60s stations, but dang, even with that song not really having bass in it whatsoever, there was a good bit of bass there. And really, I said this in my reviews before, Bose sound systems always kill it. They've been around for forever. I've had them in my vehicles. They've never broken on me. Bose sound systems are really where it's at, so certainly no issues there. But last thing on that text display I wanted to mention to you guys is... When you do put the CX-30 in reverse, you will find a rear view camera, disappointingly not taking up the whole screen, but a small portion of it, but still it's there for you, letting you know who or what is behind you, which is always is going to lead us into safety. And so to start front side, side curtain airbags will come standard, but also driver and passenger side knee airbags. It doesn't always come standard on every vehicle out there. In the back, you're going to have latch, AKA lower anchors and tethers for children for rear car seats, rear child door locks back there, tire pressure monitoring system, but also standard smart brake support, lane departure warning, lane keep assist. Although when I was driving, it's not as noticeable as some other manufacturers out there, but it's there and every system's different. Adaptive cruise control with stop and go, driver attention alert, and high beam control. And then if you go with the select trim level and up, that is going to add in addition to that blind spot monitor with rear cross traffic alert. And so if we were doing a comparison and really this is just a review of the CX-30, the Hyundai Kona would win at a quicker acceleration and better lane keep assist system. And the Mazda CX-30 would most definitely win at interior quality and steering feel without a doubt. So you decide, put it in the comments section below. Do appreciate you guys watching more than you know. Feel free to follow me on social media at the bottom of the screen there. Be sure to hit the subscribe and the bell notification button if you're in the new car reviews. That is what we do here on this channel. After all, do appreciate you guys watching. I will see you guys all in the next video. Stay gold.